Welcome to Straight White American Jesus. My name is Brad Onishi. Our show is hosted in partnership with the CAP Center at UCSB. And uh, today I have a special guest, somebody who's going to really help us understand something I think is very important. And that, that is Dr. Annie Selleck, who's the Associate Director of the Women's Center at Georgetown University. She earned her doctorate in systematic theology at Boston College and by training is an ecclesiologist who studies power in the Catholic Church in the United States. Her academic research is... Uh, Multivalent includes uh, research into rape culture on Catholic college campuses, responding to the sex abuse crisis in the Catholic church, feminist and liberation uh, theologies, and racism and sexism in the church. Her research has appeared in Modern Theology, the Journal for Social, uh, excuse me, Journal for Catholic Social Thought, America Magazine, The Washington Post, Commonweal, and several edited volumes and collections. So Dr. Selleck, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks. It's great to be with you. Well, I uh, reached out to you to, to see if you could come on and help us understand what's going on with the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and uh, their recent vote on, uh, among other things, abortion and the a formal statement on the meaning of the Eucharist in the life of the church. So in kind of plain language, that means there was a vote, and I'm going to let you explain it. You're the expert, and, and you're going to do this way better than me. But there was a vote last week. Uh, among the, the United States or the American bishops, that seems like it could have been uh, the first step in maybe denying communion to President Biden because of his uh, pro-choice stance and perhaps other political leaders. And so um, could you just help us understand, first off, what happened here? What What's going on exactly? So last week was a gathering of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, or what we say is the USCCB. So the bishops all gathered, and this was on Zoom, which is an important context, because as we all know at this point, Zoom is not conducive to nuance or details or good conversation. So they met on Zoom, and the vote that they took up, they covered lots of things at this conference, but the particular vote that we're looking at was a vote whether to advance the drafting of a document on what they're calling Eucharistic coherence. Now, if that's a term you've never heard before, then you are like 99% of theologians, let alone Catholics. Right, so they are trying to look at what is the role of the Eucharist, what is the role of communion in the life of the church, now particularly as it corresponds to politicians surrounding abortion. So this is not a formal vote on whether politicians who support abortion should receive communion. It's a vote to say that they want to draft a document. And then in this fall's in-person meeting, they'll vote on that document. And if they vote on that document and everything moves forward, would that then lead to a situation where someone like President Biden or you know, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or other uh, Catholic politicians who are pro-choice in some form, would that lead to them being in danger of, of being denied communion if they attend mass uh, and so on? I think that's the logical conclusion of where it looks like this is heading. However, this is where we start getting into church politics. So the Vatican um, would have to approve that. So in order for that to passed, they would need three quarters of the bishops to to agree, um, or I'm sorry, two thirds of the bishops to agree, and then the Vatican would have to approve. So this is where it starts getting a little trickier. So prior to this meeting, this spring, or uh, this summer, this June meeting, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which is kind of known as the Vatican Watchdog, um, they wrote to the U.S. bishops and said, look, please don't do this. Please do not take up this issue. We think the only reason you should bring up this issue is if it's something that will unite the church. And if it's not going to unite the church, please don't do it. So actually, a lot of people were surprised that the U.S. bishops brought up this issue since the Vatican had said, please, we're just asking you, take a deep breath, right? Like, take a beat, make sure this is what's going on. We also know that through a leaked letter, um, 
a group of bishops had written to the president of the USCCB and said, look, again, like, please do not bring this up now because we think it's important that we're in person, right? They're so, the church is so polarized right now that if we do this over Zoom, everyone's going to fight. And if we actually want to be leaders of the church, we should do this in person. So the fact that it's brought up is is significant politically. This is my next question is given that back background and that context, why why this now? Uh, is there a reason they felt compelled to to you know sort of start this process at this point? This is where we might look at it from a few different angles. So what Archbishop, um, which the so what the president of the USCCB, um, Archbishop Jose Gomez, he's in Los Angeles. What he keeps saying is, this does not have to do with Joe Biden. Now, what the two-hour discussion around this over Zoom said is that bishops kept saying this is because of Joe Biden, right? <laughs> so the short answer is, why now, Joe Biden? This is really where it depends of where you're looking at it from. So the bishops who are saying we need to address this now, this is urgent because we have a Catholic president are saying, you know, this is the most visible a Catholic has been in modern U.S. politics. There is a risk that people will be confused about what the Catholic Church teaches about abortion because there is a president who supports abortion. The people who disagree with that say, come on, there is no question where the Catholic Church teaches, what the Catholic Church teaches on abortion. That is one of the clearest teachings of the church, right? If you ask a random person on the street, they can tell you that the Catholic Church opposes abortion. So this, again, it gets, it depends who you believe. And if you think people are playing politics or not. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, I, we've had two, I always tell my students, you know, we've had, we have had 45 presidents. Uh, Barack Obama was the first black president, first person of color. And then we've had now two Catholics. We had John F. Kennedy. And obviously it was a massive deal when John F. Kennedy ran for president. There was a big uh, national kerfuffle about it. And now we have Joe Biden. Um, and I guess that was my next question is, you know, what message does this send about how the U.S. bishops are going to relate to Biden going forward? And then also, again, I mean, we have something like 90 or 91 uh, Democratic Catholics in Congress who are most, uh, I mean, the overwhelming majority of whom are pro-choice in some sense, some form. Uh, does this send a message to them? Is there is there more at play just in terms of power and leverage? Or is this, as you say, simply a matter of Biden's a Catholic, he's in the White House, the church has to make its stance plain. And so it's our time to shine. Let's do it, whether or not the Vatican wants us to or not. I think the way that this looks for how the bishops will work with Biden is not great. So we can even look back at Biden's limited presidency so far and see this. So after Biden was elected, the USCCB formed a working group around what they called the problem of Joe Biden's presidency. <laughs> they disbanded that working group this winter, um, right before the start of Lent. But then also if we look at on Joe Biden's inauguration, again, the USCCB president released a statement, a very long statement, it was about 1200 words, that was not welcoming. It was voiced a lot of concern about Joe Biden's presidency. And we contrast that with the Vatican, right? So Pope Francis and Joe Biden had a, President Biden had a phone call where they talked about climate change and the crisis around migrants and refugees in the world. So here we have a lot of different moving parts for when we're talking about who is the church, what is the relationship between church authority and Joe Biden? So we have that. The other part though that I want to introduce is the local bishop in Washington, DC. It's Archbishop Wilton Gregory. And 
or I'm sorry, Cardinal Wilson Gregory. He was made a Cardinal this winter. Um, and he's the first African-American Cardinal in the U.S. So this is really big. And Cardinal Gregory has said in no uncertain terms that he welcomes Joe, President Biden to the communion table, to the Eucharistic table. He said that he doesn't want to bring a gun to the Eucharistic table, that this is something that he approaches President Biden with open arms. So while you have a overwhelming majority of the Catholic bishops in the country having a very adversarial relationship, which they're initiating, right? President Biden isn't initiating this yeah. relationship. You have his local cardinal saying, you're welcome here. You are welcome here. And the way that canon law is written, it's up to the individual bishop. So it's not the U.S. bishops as a whole do not take a vote and say Joe Biden can receive communion or not. They would take a vote and give guidance to bishops for how to address this, because all bishops have politicians in their diocese, right? Especially when we're looking at local government, state legislatures, right? This isn't just a Washington, D.C. issue. In terms of what what is the relationship between Joe Biden and the bishops? Um, and then if we even put it at a smaller level, we have the issue of his local parish. And to my knowledge, he hasn't registered as a parishioner anywhere, um, but he most often attends um, Holy Trinity Church in, in Washington, D.C. in Georgetown, um, where full disclosure, I'm also a parishioner. I have never seen him at mass, um, <laughs> but just full disclosure there. Um, yep, yep. And um, I think the, the parish staff there has, tried to stay out of the media on this one. Um, but, you know, we look at the day-to-day -day reality. It's not bishops giving out communion, m you know, more often than not. Yeah. And often it's not even priests giving out communion, right? We have lay ministers as Eucharistic ministers. And the idea that we would have ministers policing communion is very far removed from the pastoral realities, um, and also the vision of the church in terms of what is the Eucharist, what is communion. You know, I was thinking about this the other day, and, and other folks on Twitter have have brought this up. And and so Joe Biden is, is not somebody who has had an abortion. He's a man. So he's not, uh, you know, had an abortion. I'm not going to elaborate on that. Doesn't seem like that's something in his past. Uh, is not a doctor, does not seem to perform abortions. Um, you know, I, I, I would be very surprised if we learned that that is part of uh, Joe Biden's history. My point is, is as somebody who has neither um, experienced an abortion nor performed abortions as a medical professional, we really are getting into this weird area where, as you're saying, there's a policing going on that just seems to really, even for those of us who are not Catholic and are looking at this from outside, this just seems like very, like very different waters than we're used to seeing, uh, you know, everyone from local uh, priests to, you know, the the, the council of bishops, uh, kind of operating. It just seems like we're in different territory. Other folks have also brought up the fact that, as you said, when President Biden spoke to the Pope, they talked about things like climate change and other issues, and folks have said, well, Bill Barr, you know, uh, was was, uh, you know, part of the the Trump administration. A Catholic, somebody who reinstated in many ways and accelerated the death penalty, uh, you know, on a federal level. And there was no response there. And I guess, you know, we don't need to get into debates about that today in terms of, um, you know, death penalty and the church's teaching. I guess what I'm trying to point out, though, is that it just seems weird that the, the, this issue would be chosen as a as a as a sort of, hey, we're going to we're going to take this vote and we're going to send clear shots across the bow to this administration. And I think it's not hard to find uh, other examples as to, well, why not here? Why not there? Why not then? Why not then? Uh, does that make any sense to you in terms of just, this just seems like it's a little bit out of place in terms of what we've come to expect from the Catholic Church in the United States? I think what this does is it raises a question of how do we consider a culture of life that the U.S. Catholic Church promotes, right? So, Again, the Catholic Church, one of the most central teachings is the dignity of the human person. So the Catholic Church teaches no. that no. 
life issues span a variety of political issues, right? So life issues, yes, include abortion, but it also includes things like child poverty, hunger, death penalty, end of life issues around euthanasia. Climate change is one of the most central life issues. And this is something that Pope Francis has been talking about a lot, right? So it raises this this focus on abortion, I think, is rightfully raising the question for people of, well, where do we, where do we draw a line? Because if you look at the migrant and refugee crisis in the world, that there are people dying every day, right? If you look at the wars throughout the world, the wars the U.S. has been engaged in, right? These are central life issues, economics. Our central life issues. Um, the U.S. bishops used to be very outspoken on economics. They wrote about economic justice. We don't hear that as much anymore. Now, an interesting thing here, and I'll tie yeah. it back to a previous yeah. question that you asked about, you know, what about like all the congressional reps who are Catholic? So 59 congressional representatives who are Catholic issued a letter last yeah. week. And this letter I mean, it had to be written either by someone who is a theology major or is a theologian. It is an amazing letter. But what they say is that, you know, there is yeah. no political party in the United States that perfectly aligns with Catholic teaching. There just isn't. And anyone who tries to tell you that is lying. So what they said is, yeah. you know, we are sitting here trying to enact the justice that our faith demands of us. And we're doing this by addressing child poverty and hunger, right? We're doing this by how we respond to the pandemic. Um, we're doing this by just immigration policies. And we wanna call attention to that. And so I think what this is, um, it's striking to me that yeah. 59 Catholic representatives are saying, here is the breadth of Catholic social teaching. And what we see with the Zoom call of the bishops is they're focused on abortion. And there is some parts where they say, and and maybe euthanasia. They, they tie that in. There's some debate around that. Um, I was not on the Zoom calls. I can't attest to that. Um, yeah. But I think that's a really important question around <laughs> what does it look like to put Catholic teaching into action politically, right? And this is something that the Catholic Church calls all Catholics to form their conscience. And what the congressional representatives are saying is we're trying to form our conscience. We're we're following our conscience. We want the support of our church yeah. in that. You know, I know one of the the signees of that letter was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And when I think of Representative Ocasio-Cortez, I think of someone who's young. I think of somebody who is a person of color, who has uh, 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 parents and, and others who um, you know immigrated to the country and, and so on and so forth. I'm just wondering if, and this might be the most important thing we talk about today, is does sending this, this sort of missive across the bow now is that sending a certain message to young Catholics, to Catholics who often feel like they um, are trying to hold together uh, certain identities that create tension uh, with their faith? You know, members of the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, there was a, a, a piece out yesterday or the day before from The New Yorker about the women who want to be priests. Right. And so we have folks who are faithful Catholics and yet they are always trying to hold in, in tension other identities. Uh, other aspects of who they are, is this going to set? Is this going to backfire uh, when it comes to those groups and those those individuals and those communities? And I guess a follow up is: is it also going to embroil the church and politics in a direct way that is just going to get really messy going forward? I, I guess those are two things on my mind as we kind of start to wrap up today. In terms of if it's going to backfire or not, it already is backfiring. Yes, absolutely. So. Right. I'm an ecclesiologist. I study the nitty gritty dynamics of the church politics. So this meeting, this bishops meeting was on my radar last week. But I said to myself, well, they're just voting on whether or not to advance a draft. No one outside of our handful of ecclesiologists are going to pay attention to this. And my goodness, was I wrong <laughs> on that? Right. What was what was the headline? 
across yeah. every newspaper. Bishops are taking up the question of denying communion to President Biden and other politicians. Um, so yes, it's absolutely backfiring. Um, I also want to tell a story that I think illustrates this. So I received a Marco Polo, you know, a video message from a friend. Um, and this is a friend who was raised Catholic, um, Catholic school her whole life, in college, kind of fell away from practicing in the past 15 years since we graduated college, has not been a practicing Catholic, but still holds the fact that she was raised Catholic as part of her identity. Um, she has two children, and we've been talking a lot about how now that some some of the social distancing limitations of the pandemic are ending and lifting that now is such a ripe time as a parent to really adjust how we teach our families about god about church right so if you haven't been taking your five-year-old to church the past five years you can do it right now right that's kind of we're reestablishing all these patterns. And so she and her spouse were ready to take their children to church. And then this came out. And so what she did is she wrote to her local bishop and said, hey, Bishop, I support abortion. Am I welcome? Wow. She, she hasn't heard anything back. I don't expect yeah. her to hear anything back. But I think that illustrates perfectly how this is going to backfire, that we have this moment where we're coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic in the US, and not that it's over, but right, we're starting to reassess and ask questions about what is life? How, what do we value? How do we find community? Where does God fit in this? Where does community fit in this? How do I wanna spend my time? And instead of the church visibly and loudly welcoming all, the church is leading with exclusion. And I think that's going to sadly really impact the church. And I think the bishops are really going to look back and regret this decision. It's a, thank you for sharing that anecdote. Uh, it really does illustrate the stakes, I think, uh, of, of this moment. I guess to, just to kind of follow up, you know, if, if if the bishops send this kind of message on this issue, are they going to open themselves up to all kinds of folks saying, well, what about this issue? And what about that issue? And uh, when it comes to, um, you know, refugees or children in camps, or um, when it comes to, uh, you know, I'm in California, we're going through the worst drought in recorded history. Uh, I have had very serious thoughts about what are we going to do in 10 years? Or do we need to move to a completely different region is that just going to be normal uh, are we real have we reached the point in the climate crisis where you know 72 million people in the southwest are thinking we need to find another place to live perhaps in the next decade or two all of that to say um when i saw this uh the headlines and i started reading the articles i just thought not only is this going to backfire with young catholics and other communities across the nation but it, it seems like it's going to now sort of people are going to be demanding responses where they maybe wouldn't have before from the from the uh, from the bishops. So does that make any sense to you? Is is it, 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 it I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this from the outside, you know, from your point of view, does that make sense? And just in terms of the, this, this sort of renewed intimacy between the church and politics in a way that that doesn't seem like it's uh, like it's the norm? I am hopeful that the church, and by the church, I mean a very broad view of the church, that I am the church, you are the church, right? I am hopeful that the church starts demanding of our leaders action on more issues than just abortion. To me, to have parishioners calling their pastor, calling their bishop and saying, I have not heard your statement about um, racial justice. Where is your statement about racial justice? I have not heard you speak out in support of Black Lives Matter. I have not heard you speak out to demand an end to family separation at the border. I think that would be a wonderful thing. Yeah. Because what it shows is that we see the demands that faith makes on our, our decisions, our daily life, right? When I'm debating whether to buy a car or not and what type of car, my faith should be a factor in that, right? My theology should be a factor in this. These shouldn't be seen as different. 
what I don't want to see happen is that people would become so focused on policing who is present at communion, who is receiving the commun- the Eucharist, who is part of the community of church, that we would just have people excluding one another. And that's not what the church is. And that's that's not the vision of the church that Pope Francis is putting forward either. So a quotation that I've seen around a lot, it's from his recent apostolic letter. Um, it it addresses this directly. And this is something that, again, the, the Catholic um, congressional representatives said. Um, so in his recent apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, He's drawing upon St. Ambrose and he says, the Eucharist, although it is the fullness of sacramental life, is not a prize for the perfect, but a powerful medicine and nourishment for the weak. So I think I would love to see people engaged in looking at how their Catholic faith makes demands on their political decisions, on their daily life. But we need to remember that the Eucharist is not a prize that we win if we are holy enough that this is something that unites the community. Yeah, uh, thank you. That's a, a fantastic sentiment to close on. Uh, Dr. Annie Selleck, thank you for your time. Thank you for your expertise and your insight. Uh, we really appreciate it. I'm wondering if uh, there's ways people can link up with you uh, online and with, and with your work. Uh, are there ways people can connect with you uh, if they'd like to? Yeah, the best way to connect with me is on Twitter. So I'm at A Selleck, A-S-E-L-A-K. Um, and I tweet there about the Catholic Church, race and gender, and also a lot of WNBA as well. Go Mystics. Go Mystics. Okay. <laughs> All right. As an as a Southern California native, I will, um, you know, I'll have to think about that because the Sparks are our team. So um, I'm regretting I'm regretting doing this interview now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, that's great. Well, as always, friends, um, you can find us at Straight White JC. You can find me at Bradley Onishi. We're on Instagram at Straight White JC, and we can always use your help on uh, Patreon and PayPal, and you can find that at straightwhiteamericanjesus.com. We'll be back later this week, but for now, have a great day. Dr. Annie Selleck, thanks again for being here. Thanks.